NFT artwork is fun to collect. You don't have to worry about a use case or a roadmap or a rug. But where should you start? What marketplaces are out there and what should you know about them? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins. Welcome to the NFT Brief. I spent the past few months building a collection of NFT artworks. I've explored the various different sites and marketplaces that are out there and I've talked to other collectors in platforms like Artblocks. So in this video, I'm going to profile 11 different marketplaces and sites that you can use to understand the world of NFT artwork specifically and generative art. Now, I hope you enjoy this profile of these 11 different sites, but please remember NFTs are incredibly risky. NFTs, including generative artworks, can go to zero. So it's not something that you're going to buy for a profit. And I'm not a financial advisor and this content is for informational purposes only. So always do your own research. With that said, let's dive into 11 sites that can help you do just that. Suffice to say, if you're going to buy some NFT artwork or NFTs by a crypto artist, then OpenSea is probably your first port of call. That's because it's the biggest known NFT marketplace and it does the most trading volume. So when you land on the OpenSea homepage, you can navigate to the art tab and find lots of art NFTs. So this is great that they're all in one place, but it can also be a little bit confusing because there are different types of NFTs bundled into the art category. So for example, here is CryptoPunks, which is arguably a PFP NFT rather than specifically an art NFT. We can also see some Artblocks NFTs like Friendship Bracelets, which I profile on the channel. And of course the blue chip Chromy Squiggle or Chromy Squiggle. And we can see the Max Payne and Friends by Xcopy, who I profile on the channel. However, this NFT has not been revealed yet. But then if we scroll further down, we can see other NFTs that perhaps are not really NFT artworks and are more gamified NFTs or M NFTs that relate to the metaverse or perhaps some sort of other project. One example is of course 10KTF, which I profile on detail on the channel. But these aren't really artworks, they relate to the 10KTF ecosystem. So it can be a little bit confusing if you're trying to pick up an artwork and not an NFT that does something or that is a PFP or has some other use case. When I'm looking to buy a generative art NFT or an NFT from a well-known artist, my first part of call is Artblocks. Artblocks is the number one place in the space to go to get NFT artwork on the Ethereum blockchain. It releases new NFTs every week. Artblocks can be a little bit confusing to figure out if you're new to it. So I recommend joining their Discord and I have some resources on the channel where I profile it in more detail. But suffice to say, Artblocks has several different types of collections and you can read all about the different types of collections on the website. Currently, the collections are Curated, Presents, Collaborations, and Explorations. Curated, with some notable exceptions, tend to have the most value because they're selected by the Artblocks Curation Board. That said, you will find blue chip NFTs in the other types of collections as well, but they're not curated in the same sense as these ones are. If you find an NFT you're particularly interested in, usually you're gonna to have to pick it up in the secondary market because bots will usually go ahead and mint it out, particularly if it's a curated NFT. So here is the Harvest, which was a really successful curated drop. So you can see a preview of what the generative art NFT does on the Artblocks website. So this is a sci-fi themed NFT. It's supposed to represent aliens harvesting resources from our planet. Further down, you can read about the backstory or lore behind the NFTs. You can get a link that will take you to more information about the project and the artist. And you will also get official links uh, to the various secondary marketplaces where you can pick one up. Now, I know it can be a little bit confusing to navigate uh, Artblocks and to pick up an NFT. So there is an aggregator that I recommend using alongside Artblocks. It's called article.io. You're not going to use this to purchase your NFT. Instead, you're simply going to click Artblocks and then click whatever type of collection you're interested in. And then you can view all of the NFTs by floor price, by volume, by mint date, and so on. If I look for the Harvest uh, NFT collection on Article, I can click on the collection. And now we can see information about how much it minted for, the current floor, so this one has done quite well, uh, the volume for this particular NFT collection over the past 24 hours or uh, in total. And I can also see individual NFTs from their collection and sort them by traits and rarity. So in other words, look on our art blocks to see what's coming up. And then if you're interested in picking one up, then you can go ahead and use Article to do a bit more research. If you like what's on art blocks and you want to explore the world of generative art NFTs further, this 
platform was recommended to me on the Artblocks Discord. It's called Sansa.xyz and it's basically a marketplace specifically for generative art collectors. So you can use this to see drops that have taken place and that are coming up. So here's a drop that's coming up on Artblocks. It's called New Worlds by the well-known artist Robert Whitman. And this is from the Artblocks Pace series, which represents their, I suppose, collaborations with real world artists and galleries. So this mint will take place tomorrow as part of a Dutch auction. The current or the, it will start at six each and descend downwards. I'll be keeping a close eye on this to see what the final price is. I can also see what happened with uh, previous drops on Artblocks. So this was a drop from the, I think it was the Presents series that took place yesterday. Um, Presents NFTs don't tend to have the same floor price and this one did not mint out. So you can see here that the floor price is 0.198 and 35% are listed, but there was only 17 or 18 items in the 120 piece collection. Now, Sansa.xyz is different to uh, Article in that I can go ahead and I can mint directly via the Sansa website. But not only that, I can actually purchase NFTs on the Sansa website as well. So here are friendship bracelets. I've profiled friendship bracelets in detail on this channel. It was a free NFT from Artblocks. It was a way of giving back to the community. And I can see who the top owners are, uh, the floor strength. I can learn more about the artist. All great information for researching generative art NFTs. And if I decide I want to buy one, I can just simply click on it and I can make an offer or I can buy now once I connect my wallet. So it's a good way of buying generative art NFTs outside of OpenSea. It's also worth pointing out that uh, Sansa.xyz is not specifically about art blocks. It's also uh, about generative art NFTs across a variety of platforms. Um, so if I click on view more top collections, you can sort them all by floor price, by mint date, supply, and also by volume. And this is a great way of just exploring other NFTs that are in the space that you might not have heard about. And no, you're not gonna find any apes on this marketplace. Enter Rarible, which was founded before OpenSea in 2017. It's not quite as big, but it was the first NFT marketplace to aggregate NFTs from a variety of blockchains. So these include Ethereum, Tezos, ImmutableX, Polygon, and Solana. In other words, it's got a user-friendly interface and it supports a wide variety of assets, including NFT artwork. Now, if you decide to use Rarible, uh, it offers rewards in the form of the Rary token, which you can stake and which you can also use on the Rarible marketplace. Now, again, like OpenSea, when you start using Rarible, it can be a little bit difficult to find NFTs that are specifically artworks. So for example, if I click on the Explore tab, these are NFTs uh, that are passes, such as Sewer Pass by Uger Labs, or PFPs, or memes, or games, and so on. But if I'm looking for an NFT artwork, it can be a little bit more difficult to find one on Rarible, unless you know specifically what you're looking for. If you do know specifically what you're looking for, I'd also encourage you to spend a bit more time doing your own research. So this Sewer Pass here was a red flag for me. So currently the floor price of Sewer Pass is 2.94 ETH on OpenSea and other marketplaces. But for some reason, this one here is selling for 1.388 ETH. So could it be a sewer pass that somebody has forgot to change the price for? Maybe, maybe not. Or could it be a sewer pass that a scammer or hacker has taken from somebody's wallet and is trying to sell for a quick flip? So I'd encourage you to be skeptical of any deals that you see on other NFT marketplaces. Now again, I've no idea if this actually is a scammy NFT, but it is an example of how, you know, crypto and NFTs is still a risky space if you're new. Super Rare is a much older NFT marketplace. Is anything old in the NFT space? Well, it is if it was founded in 2017, like Super Rare. So Super Rare focuses specifically on NFTs from the world's top artists. So if you find somebody on Twitter who's an NFT artist that you like, or Instagram or elsewhere, then chances are they have something on Super Rare that you can buy or pick up. And you also find NFTs from up and coming artists as well as unknown artists. Now, if you're interested in what's on Super Rare, you can pick up what's called a Rare Pass. Um, I'm interested in picking one of these up myself, or at least I was interested until I saw how much they're currently selling for. So if one of these will set you back at least $70,000, which is quite a lot of money, so definitely something for serious collectors only. That said, if you can't afford one of those passes, you can still just purchase one of these NFTs as normal uh, on the marketplace. It has a tab for exploring uh, live auctions, for exploring uh, up-and-coming artworks. Um, there's a tab for uh, serious 
you know, a generative art series that you may be interested in on Super Rare. And also the trending artists section, which is probably the place that I use the most on Super Rare. So as you can see, Xcopy, who's one of the space's best known NFT artists, has generated the most sales uh, on Super Rare, followed by some of these other artists. I've noticed when I click on a collection in Super Rare, there's a little bit of a lag before everything starts to display. So it's a bit slower than OpenSea, but it's still quite good for finding artwork by artists from the likes of Xcopy. So you can see here all of his famous pieces have started to appear, including God is Typing, which sold for $439,000. or $443,000. Grifters, which is one of his most famous collections. Decay, The Foot, uh, and so on. So this is a good place to go for researching uh, your favorite NFT artist outside of OpenSea. Next up is Nifty Gateway. But before I profile Nifty Gateway, I wanted to warn you about researching NFT marketplaces for yourself. There are a lot of scammers who are using Google Ads to display in Google search results what looks like a legit NFT marketplace. But none of these ads link to Nifty Gateway, which is one of the space's best known marketplaces. These are simply linking to uh, sites that will drain your wallet of EAT. So if you're ever using Google to find a marketplace, make sure that you're going to the correct URL and always double check and verify before you actually do anything with your precious EAT. After all, the space still is quite risky to play in. And I also recommend using, or I also recommend using a hardware wallet as well as a burner wallet. And I have another video on the channel where I go into detail with some NFT security tips. Duncan and Griffin Cockfoster founded this OpenSea alternative back in 2018. So around the same time OpenSea was uh, set up. And they subsequently sold it to the Winklevoss twins. So in other words, it's owned now by Gemini. Now, Nifty Gateway focuses on limited edition NFTs and NFT artworks. And to that end, it has a partnership with Sotheby's. So if you're looking for NFT artwork or you're looking for a collection by somebody you've been following on Twitter, this could be a place that you could end up. Just be sure you're on the right URL. Now, I liked it for a couple of different reasons. So firstly, if I go to Drops, there's a Nifty Gateway curated uh, drop schedule. So this will help me find NFT drops from a variety of different artists and collections, not just art blocks. So good, it's a good way of finding generative art outside of art blocks. Secondly, if I go to the stats section, or secondly, if I go to the marketplace section, it has a icon for a one of ones, so I can find one of one NFTs that could potentially appeal to me. When I clicked on this, I like this one here. Do you see the sparkle in my eyes by Ed Roken Pakaskoy? Now I have no idea who this person is or this artist is, but this reminded me of a kind of a cartoonish X copy piece. Hasn't been released yet, but I'll be interested to see uh, how much it goes for. Uh, and if I navigate backwards, I can also go up by most liked. So these are some of the most liked NFTs uh, on Nifty Gateway. And you can see the floor price is relatively affordable and it's also in dollars. <clears throat> now, if I go to the stats section and go to rankings, I can see the most popular collections over the past 24, 7, 30 days in all time. So let's just go to all time. And to no great surprise, X copy is coming in at, well, maybe because he's number two is X Copy's Max Payne collection, uh, which has a $24 million in total volume. Uh, and then the biggest collection is M by Pack. So when I click on this, I can see the amount of owners, the floor price, how many are for sale, and so on. So in other words, it's a good place to find uh, collections from your favorite NFT artist. If you want to look outside art blocks and you want to look outside OpenSea. Gen.art is a popular NFT marketplace for finding generative artwork. But it also has a DAO or decentralized autonomous organization. I'll cover that in a moment. But firstly, it features the work of well-known NFT artists like It's Gallo, Mood Soup, Ash White, and so on. Now you can become a member of Gen.art and get access to uh, the drops from these artists or get a whitelist opportunity to purchase their NFTs before anybody else. To do that, you'll need to become a member and that will give you access to the DAO. So there are 5,100 members at the time of recording this video. Uh, the floor price for these tokens is currently 0.11 ETH. So you can pick one of these up relatively uh, cheap, at least at the time of recording. Uh, that said, I understand the floor price for these was significantly higher during the NFT bull run. Now, because it uses a membership token to give access uh, to NFT artwork collectors, you don't need to worry about uh, gas wars. And you also don't need to worry about not being able to purchase an NFT because somebody got in there before you. That said, it's a good place to go if you're looking for a generative artwork outside of art blocks. Known Origin is another popular marketplace for buying one of one NFT artworks from new and well-known creators uh, in the space. 
So some of the trending artists on Known Origin include Sabet and Custom Horror. This particular marketplace also has been around since 2017, so it's one of the more established uh, places in the space that you can go. And of course, it has a calendar for drops. So currently, uh, it's promoting this drop by Danny Eaglander, which is dropping in two days. And it also has a section where you can view the latest activity uh, from people who are active on this particular marketplace. If you're looking at these Ethereum NFTs and you're saying to yourself, these are all crazy expensive. Why not pick up an NFT on the Tezos blockchain? Tezos NFTs are much more affordable and they're relatively easy to buy. You just need to set up a Tezos wallet rather than a MetaMask wallet and purchase some Tezos token. Then you're going to visit a site like, like fxhash.xyz. So this is the open platform for finding generative NFTs on the Tezos blockchain. There's an entire community and an ecosystem around Tezos NFTs because there are a better entry points into the space. Now, if you go to the marketplace section, you can see the highest volume Tezos NFTs of all time. The biggest collection is Garden Monoliths by Zancan. It has a floor price of approximately 14,500 Tezos. Tezos at the time of recording is trading at around about $1. So this is actually quite an expensive uh, NFT. But I guess it's the blue chip on the Tezos blockchain. But if you move further down the highest volume NFTs, you can find more affordable Tezos uh, artworks like Dragons by William Mapen. And the floor price for this particular uh, NFT is 8,000 Tezos. So I guess still a little bit expensive. So let's look at Horizons. The floor price is 1,000. Uh, let's look at Fragments of a Wave. Floor price is 869. So if I was looking for a Tezos NFT, I could go through uh, the NFTs by the highest volume until I find one that I like that is within my budget. Or I could look at, at the NFTs uh, that have had the highest volume over the past 24 hours. So here is Tesseract and the floor price for this is 434 Tezos, which is $434. Um, and you will find uh, NFTs on Tezos or on fx.hash that you can buy for tens of dollars rather than hundreds. If that process is a bit overwhelming, why not visit tender.art? So this is basically a place that you can go uh, to learn about NFTs on the Tezos blockchain. It basically curates upcoming collections and recent collections. It publishes interviews with artists and so on. It's doing for Tezos what Artblocks is doing for Ethereum NFTs. And fun fact, some Artblocks curated artists started out on the Tezos blockchain. Those are 12 different sites that you can go to to explore and perhaps even find your first generative art NFT. Use these tools to do your own research and always remember that you, it's a good idea to look at an NFT and say to yourself, is this something that I want to hold for the long term? Because when it comes to generative artwork, Usually people pick them up not because they want to flip them or because of the floor price, but because they like the artwork itself. After all, generative art doesn't tend to have a use case or some future roadmap. And in a way, that's why I like collecting them. So I hope you enjoyed this profile of the best uh, NFT sites to go to for finding generative artwork. If you do, hit thumbs up. And if you want to get another video like this, don't forget to subscribe to the NFT Brief.